G'day legends, I'm Dan here at Custom RV and we've got a special guest in the workshop today. We've got Rocket Rod. Now, Rocket knows a heck of a lot about autos. I thought we'd take this opportunity to go through, firstly, why I'm putting an auto in the Dirty 30, all about autos, about the upgrades you can do, the upgrades I've done, and um, how to get the most out of your auto in general. Mate, straight away, the first question I'm going to get asked a hell of a lot is why put an auto in the Dirty 30? Now, for me, it's just the control that an auto offers off-road. That's that's what I'm really excited for. And obviously, the ease of driving, just an auto is very easy to drive. But what's the benefits of an auto off-road? The autos have come a long way, especially in the last 20 years. And the reason why we basically chose an auto for this is because it ticked every box. We're talking about a five speed. It's a more modern automatic, has a low first gear. It naturally has a nice tall overdrive. Lock up in a torque converter. Um, the torque converter itself is really good at letting uh, turbos, especially modified and, and uh, like chipped and all that sort of stuff. High horsepower. All those high horsepower things, it allows all the turbos to come up on boost yep. straight away. Before you even moved a millimeter off of a line, your boost is up and you're already going. No effort whatsoever. The torque converter just acts as a giant shock absorber for the entire drivetrain. An automatic is very sympathetic to the, the drivetrain. With, with the 79, you, you've broken, what, a couple of CVs and all those tough Oh, I've only done. broken one CV one and I CV. broke a CV because I broke an axle. Yeah. And I broke an axle because <laughs> I, I was being stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. You, you don't break much in that and that's because you reckon the auto has a lot to do with automatic it. Automatic is so sympathetic to the drivetrain. And look, if it wasn't for that automatic, it wouldn't, you know, it makes me look good all the yeah, time. Yeah, you know well, what I mean? You can just see the control that you've got off road, you know, especially on those steep sort of hill climbs and stuff like that. When you want to stop, take another line, you can. You can just put your foot on the brake and then when you want to take off, it's not like dump the clutch, go backwards. It's just nice and controlled. Yep, let's go forward. And that's what I'm really you excited about. You can inch about. them. You can inch things forward. You don't have to do these wild little handbrake starts on hills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just sit there, just two foot take off. You don't even roll back a millimetre. And you can do it slowly. You can do a challenge very, very slowly. Yep. Or you can tackle it with a bit of gusto and, and hit a rock really hard. And like I said, talk about acts as a shock absorber. It's, it ticks, it's the only transmission yep. that'll tick every single box. Now, now, I guess the next thing, let's go into this particular auto when I'm running yep. the Dirty 30. Now, it's a, it's a five-speed auto. This comes out of a 100 series FTE. Yep. So we've actually done quite a few modifications to this uh, box, and I'll be more precise. Rocket has done a lot more modifications to this box to make it work even better off-road. So let's go through, like, what's, what's the biggest upgrade we've done to this box? Without a doubt, it's the valve body. The box itself is a fantastic box, yeah. and it fits straight onto all of the FT or you know one HDT F, uh, FT uh, FTE, yeah. um, just bolt straight on. All the 80 series, 100 series, 79 series transfer case bolt straight on the bolt other end. That's all there that, is, that is. It's yeah, there's no series. adapters here at yeah. all. So this entire conversion that you're doing here is adapter free, right? Yeah. Custom RV have made it fit in the yes, chassis. Exactly right. But from this point of view, from a driveline point of view. There's no modifications needed. However, to handle your driving yeah. style, right? Yeah. And also the FTE engine and do it safely, because you are gonna turn around and turn the wick up on this engine and put a bigger turbo on it. Yep. So we have to put a heavy duty valve body in it. Yep. All right? yep. Yep. It's the number one thing. Now, the heavy duty valve body does several things. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I've actually got one here, yep. right? Now this transmission has one of these actually already yep. built into it. Yep. All right? Yeah. This valve body does several things. One, it takes out all the factory faults. Yep. Now, after transmission's been out for a few years, we all learn little tricks and little things we can do to make transmission better. Little things that happen. <coughs> factory turns around and also does upgrades, and we turn around and do those upgrades as well. This one in particular has uh, a fourth and fifth gear modification that stops them from burning out in fourth and fifth gear. Which is quite common. It is very, very common like. for this transmission, yep. especially for transmissions behind engines that have been wound right up. And there's lots of stories out there. Some people turn around and say, oh, the four speed's stronger and all that. No, the four speed's not any stronger. Yes, it has bigger internals in some way, but it's lack of low first gear and a, a tall overdrive 
the lack of the fact that we can put a Teptronic T-Var and everything like that in it, is you've got to rely on these. And even then, for the four speeds, we've still got to put a heavy duty valve body in them behind yep. this particular engine. Yep. So if we're going to do it, let's do it the modern way. Let's yep. go with the five speed auto. So we put a heavy duty valve body in it. This will allow you to put a big turbo on it, yep. allow you to do anything you'll want. And part of these modifications we do, particularly with this valve body, we convert this automatic from a traditional gate shift type T-Bar, yep. which is the one that has, you know, uh, park, reverse, neutral, drive, second, third, you know, third Standard, second, first down. Yeah. Um, this one, in actual fact, when we put the valve body in, even though this come out of 100 series, we actually changed the valve body so it actually becomes a Tiptronic shifter. So now you've only got park, reverse, neutral, drive, yep. and then you pull it sideways, and then you've got all your sport select or Tiptronic, whichever way you want to you say it. And all these modifications are all done in this inside, this one valve body. body and obviously has higher clamping load for all the clutches more flow through the coolers more yeah. clamping load to the torque converter and all that sort of stuff so it does an awful lot it does it covers certain things it allows lock up to work in first gear so when you're going down those steep hills you can also turn lock up on and you'll have a hundred percent engine braking so just like a manual like, as well like a manual exactly right this thing will do everything that a manual do and an auto all in the one unit. Why wouldn't we do it? Yeah, so that was the first thing that we did. Yep. Right? Yep. And we've been building these now for 20 years. 20 years. Yep. Yeah, right. Various models. Yep. Now, obviously, the biggest change we had to make is that you're putting a very modern order uh, engine into an 80 series chassis. Yep. With yep. a 60 series <laughs> cut down body on it. Yep, yep. It's not meant to be in this chassis. So right. electronically, it will not work. That's right? true, that, that is true. So what we've done is that obviously through our mates at HDM Electronics over in America, they've built, it was probably one of the greatest inventions that I've ever seen. It is the most modern transmission controller on the market. Yep. It is Bluetooth compatible. You can adjust it via an app on your phone. It's IP that's, rated, that's ridiculous. it'll run underwater, run in a dust storm, it's got shock proof, like it's IP67, it's absolutely, and it's heavy duty, built, sealed, and it's made in the US, and along with this, they obviously, they supply us um, the full harness. Looks a bit scary. Yeah, it does actually. But trust <laughs> me, once you start plugging things in, yeah. everything disappears. So it actually comes with a full plug and play harness. So all these plugs that are on there, there's a yep. plug here and just plug, just plug, plug, plug. In. All and goes in the whole lot. And, and it also allows for the Tiptronic T bar. Yep. Just plug straight into it. Really? Yeah, you know, we just let you know which one you want to use. So this conversion that you're doing here can be done in a whole array of vehicles. Yeah, that's that's the main thing that that standalone computer will allow it to do because it doesn't need necessarily input from the motor. It, it can it just runs input straight through the computer. It's a complete standalone. standalone. So this so engine can actually be a non-electronic. Yeah, actually, you can it use... can be an old diesel mechanical engine and we can still turn around and put this modern auto in behind. Wow. Remember yeah. there was a while there we were going to put this auto in behind the 12HT. That's right. Well, I, was, yeah. I was contemplating putting the 12HT yep. and um, you were going to drive and make that work. And yeah, we were that... turn around about to make the adapter yep. when all of a sudden you turn around and change your mind. It was, woohoo, I made my life I easy. I made life easy for you, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's and exactly what a right. that is far out. Yeah, so but... Uh, see, a conversion like this would not be possible without a compu shift. Yep. It's physically impossible. Yep. They're a brilliant unit made by HGM, and that's the exact same computer yep. that runs all of these conversions. Yep. Now, we've done over 350 of these conversions now. We've also done them for GUs. We put the five speed Tiptronic unit in them. Uh, our boys at work are all putting five speed autos out of the 100 series into 80 series, the model yep. before, and they're all using that and one so, computer. So. I guess for someone like me who's not doesn't know a heck of a lot about autos, if I wanted to change shift patterns or anything like that, it's, it's fully adjustable. It's tunable. You guys, you guys can even access. You've got different um, maps for it on your cloud that you can download straight into it. From your point of view, it is simple. It yep. has Bluetooth connectivity. Yep. There's an app on your phone, and you can change the shift points. You can change what gears you want the lock up to working, or what speed you want it to come on, what speed you want it to come off. Um, if one shift gear, if one gear is a little bit firmer than another, you can turn around and knock it back. Yep. One's a bit softer, you can wind it up. But also, the best part about the app is that it allows us to be able to also see what you're doing with your configuration. So if you're having a problem and you're struggling to try and work it out, you give us a call, we actually log on to your app 
and we actually look at your configuration yeah. and we can quickly go through it and that and go, oh, hang on a sec, this is what you That's made a mistake. No one in the world has that ability except for the CompuShift system. This, folks, is, is what it will basically look like inside the Dirty 30. Now, obviously it goes this way, you know, hold it yeah, that well, way. Yeah, we hold it up to people so they can actually so, have a bit of a look. What, right? what the go is. And the best part about it is that, now this is a custom handmade console, yep. right? We have them for the 80 series, we have them for the 79 series. Now we don't have one for the, for the, the 60 30, series, 30, 30, but, but we'll we do have the that. components. We have the Tiptronic T-bar yep. shifter that's in this, with all the display and everything like that. It tells you, because it all comes with a, uh, they all come standard with temp gauge, with lock up and everything, all the computers come standard. And we've even had people make their own steel consoles, aluminium mm. ones, just, yeah. People are really intelligent and they come up with some fantastic ideas, which is what you're going to do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what we'll do. But I just want to show everyone this is what it's basically going to look like in the Dirty 30. It might not look exactly the same. I'll hold half that if you like. Yeah, you're right. Basically, it'll sit obviously right in here in, in, yeah. the, middle, in the middle of the Dirty 30. It basically sits up in here. And it's got a display screen as well for the computer. So that's pretty cool. I'll be able to see what, yeah, I'll be able to see the auto temp, all those sort of key. Um, I can see your voice has gone funny. You're starting to imagine that, geez, this is the closest I've seen it finished. I know, now. there's, there's, uh, a, there's you, a body part on, yeah. there's part of the interior yeah. is nearly on. You've had a thought, you've gone, it looks it's right. really going to look yeah. like that now. Yeah. Exactly right, I can see myself sitting there, <laughs> yep. cup holders, that'll do. Righto mate, well that, that's covered a fair bit about the Dirty 30 build, the modification we've done yep. to it, and why, most importantly, we're going to auto yep. in this build. So, on Instagram, I actually asked what questions have you got for Rocket Rod? Yeah. And um, we've got a lot of responses, mate. <laughs> a lot of responses. Um, so I'm gonna go through a couple of questions that people have about autos in general. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that came up, which is, is a good one, and um, I wanna hear your thoughts on this as well, is um, is it important to run a transmission cooler um, on this on this particular build or any modern um, auto? Yeah, you have to. And you actually have to have two coolers. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about a cooler that's in the radiator, and an auxiliary cooler up the front, yep. or two auxiliary coolers up the front, you've got to have a combination, you've got to have two. Yep. Um, now, in Land Cruisers, they're normally pretty good. Mm -hmm. you know? There's only one that we have any sort of trouble with, and that tends to be the 200 series, and where we do do an auxiliary cooler for it, and that's only because people are doing some fantastic things. They're doing some modifications, they're, they're oh, yeah, yeah. stretches, they're putting big caravans in it, and they will tow and max that car out. Yeah. Then they put bigger tires on. Yeah. Then they put chips and exhaust on it, and then they put roofs and roof rack, uh, roof racks and bull bars. Wait, Before yeah. you know it, the combination is what tips it over the edge, right? Then we got things like the Prado 150 and Hilux, the Colorado Ford Ranger BT50, where none of them come with an auxiliary cooler whatsoever. Right. They run with one cooler, yeah. and that's great if you're just carrying a plastic bucket and spade. <laughs> in the back, but as soon as you no start way. to put two tons in the back or mm. work in sand and everything they get really hot really really fast. So what happens is that we make an entire range yep. of auxiliary coolers which are all DIY or direct bolting with plenty of instructions yep. and it allows you to turn around and put these coolers into all these vehicles that don't otherwise have it now. It is absolutely vital. Yep. At the end of the day to answer the question it is vital to have a good cooling system for the automatic transmission. So on this particular one we'll run Two coolers? Two coolers. Two yep. coolers, okay. Yep. Two big ones, because I know exactly what you're going to do <laughs> <Yeah>. with it. <laughs> okay, here's another question as well we got we got asked, um, was on a beach, obviously yep. you're going to be putting the auto under a heck of a lot of loads, and we yep. just come off Morton Island, folks, so yep. this is actually quite relevant to talk about right now. Do you run in high range or low range on soft sand and why? In soft sand, you're always in low range. Yep. Right, and you've got to think of the, the torque converter generates a lot of slip, the torque converter generates a lot of heat, right? But if you put it in low range, it takes all the all the pressure off the automatic completely. Yep. Therefore, yeah, well, it won't build up nowhere near the amount of heat. If you're in hard, hard sand going up, you know, close to the water on Fraser, yeah, you'll be in high range and you won't have a problem. You're also going faster. But if you're in Morton soft sand, especially on the, what, West Coast, yep. you're going to be in low range. I did the entire trip on Morton all the way around and I didn't take it out of low range the whole time I was there. Yeah, incidentally, what were your um, auto temperatures getting to? Because you've got a gauge, obviously. In, in high range, I would have the light would have come on. Oh, really? Straight away, I wouldn't have turned. Sand. I would not have gotten four or five kilometres around Morton without that light coming on. In low range, the hottest I see I saw was probably 78. And remember that I was actually towing a big camper That's true. for a, for That's a couple true. of days and there as well. Some really soft sand, yeah. where you're getting bogged yep. and stuff and, like that. And even then, in low range, the temperature's never go to 78. 
Yeah. The tyres did. The tyres would have. <laughs> yeah. they were scorching hot in yeah. that sand. No doubt. No <laughs> but doubt. the auto never did. No, that's good. Yep. Well, there you go, mate. We went through everything there is to do with autos, especially the auto conversion in the Dirty 30, mate. And I reckon this is going to be an absolute beast and a pleasure Cracker. to drive. It's going to be unreal, mate. So I want to thank you for your help on this and, and making this work. Um, how do people find out more information about wholesale and where do they go to, to find out more about the valve bodies and such like that? Well, that's pretty easy. Just turn around and just jump online, yep. www.askauto.com.au. Or give us a call directly, 03 9762 8004. Easy, easy, no that easy, folks. Cheers. All right, cheers, mate, and can't wait to get this you weapon too. on the road. <laughs> so for now, make sure you subscribe, turn the notifications on so you don't miss a second of the action. This build, we're going to do more videos, so look out, because um, you don't want to miss this, let me tell you that. It's going to be cool, mate. Can't wait to get it on the road. <laughs>